Let's talk about ray marching. No need to delete the default view, just delete the principal shader. Grab a camera data node and a geometry node. Now let's do some fancy vector math to calculate the camera positions and the vector going from the camera to the shading point. You know, this is all pretty easy so far. It's time to make our first sine distance function, or SDF for short. It's going to be a sphere, because that's easy. We just need two nodes and then we can change the radius. Let's make it into a node group and change the node socket's name. That way we're tidy and we, see, we can see what we're doing. Now it's time for the actual ray marching. Let's name the node sockets here as well. You know, it should always be clean. To do ray marching we have to start at the camera and then march forward to the shading point until we hit an object. That's where the SDF comes in, to tell us when we hit an object. But you have to calculate this iteratively, and for Blender that means you have to duplicate your nodes a lot. At first you won't see much happening, but that's because we only have a few copies. It looks pretty cool, I made a mistake there. Now it actually looks like a sphere. Well, more nodes equal sharper outlines, but it's also a lot slower. Oh, and just as a side note, this technique is completely independent of the geometry of your object, so just add a plane or a monkey. Now it's time to use your brains and come up with a wacky formula to get the SDF for a cube. Or maybe just search for it online. You know what, let's add some color to the scene. Wow, and it's starting to look like our first render. Yeah, I added some lighting and some reflections. But maybe we should make a more interesting scene. You know? How about a donut? I said, more donuts. And some color. And wow, we even have shadows now? That's great. Blender's default cube is really amazing. And it's not that difficult. The possibilities are truly endless.